a blessed and a wonderful Sunday afternoon to one and all. It's indeed an honor and a privilege to be found in the house of the Lord one more time to give Him honor, to give Him glory, and to give Him praise. Hallelujah. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and enter His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His holy name. Hallelujah. It's indeed, as I said, it's indeed an honor that we can stand again wherever we are. We can be wherever we are right now to hear what God will say unto us today. Hallelujah. We are just ready and willing to receive the word that God has for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we begin our service today, we turn our hearts and our minds as we begin to prayer. Hallelujah. We begin to prayer. Yes, let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be found in your presence. Lord, another opportunity that we can come and give you glory, that we can come and give you honor, and that we can come and give you praise. Father, for without you, we are nothing, and we could do nothing. So, Lord, we worship and praise your matchless name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, and our most merciful God, we pray right now that you would send your Holy Spirit to, to be with us, Almighty God. Father, that as we would start our service, Lord, that you would just come and fill us afresh. Come and fill us afresh, mighty God. Father, that as we would go through this service, Father, that Father, that the hearts and minds of your people will be impacted. Father, we pray that some soul would be saved today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, there are some out there who might be sick right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for healing. Father, there may someone who feels their bound. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for deliverance right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, there are some people that need to know you as provider. Father, we pray that you will provide for them in the name of Jesus. Most merciful God, we pray right now, Lord, that you would just move. Father, we say not our will, but your will. Father, we may have our program set up. Lord, we may have everything put in place. But Lord, we are open and available to your move and your direction. Almighty God. Mighty God. God, right now we pray. Lord, that as we are here today, hearing your word, Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way, Lord. Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Father, as I'm about to deliver your word, Father, I pray that your word will go forth with the power and accomplish the task for which it was set up to do. 
Father, we pray that the hearts and minds of your people will receive your word. And Lord, not only that they will be hearers of your word, but Lord, that they would also be doers of your word. Lord, these things we pray in your matchless name. Amen and amen. At this time, we begin, we continue our service with singing this song. He's working it out. So many things unstable, but my God is able. To handle anything, he can face all of your problems. No matter what you're going through, no matter things may seem hard, all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord, so when you're almost done for the count, my Jesus working it out. Get ready to give him a shout, my Jesus working it out. He's working, working it out, working, working it out, working, working it out. My Jesus working it out, working. Working it out, working it out, working it out, my Jesus working it out, working, working it out, working. Why yo 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 And true. You can trust in His word. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord. So when you're almost done for the count, my Jesus working it out. Get ready to give Him a shout. My Jesus working it out. He's working, working it out. Working, working it out. Working, working it out. My Jesus working it out. Working, working it out. Working, working it out. Working. Working it out, my Jesus working it out. Working, working, working it, working, working. Why yo 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 For my good, he's working it out. Boy. No matter what you're going through, no matter things may seem hard, all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord, so when you're almost done for the count, my Jesus working it out. Get ready to give him a shout, my Jesus working it out. He's working, working it out. Hallelujah. 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 He's working it out. Hallelujah. You may seem like you're down in the valley, but God is working, working it out. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Today I want to speak to you shortly under the theme Repent. One word, repent. And from the time that Christ came, well, before that, but I want to start in the New Testament. From the time that Christ came and died upon the cross, the message has been repentance. The message of the church from the time Christ was here 
over 2,000 years ago was repent. Hallelujah. 2,000 years the church has been preaching the same message and that is repent. I want to look to the book of Jeremiah and I want to read I want to look to the book of Jeremiah and I want to read chapter 2 and verse 19 reading from the New International Version. It should be projected on the screen for you. It says, your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. The, we have already prayed that the Lord add blessings to his word. So the word the Lord has given unto us today is repent. And although we only read verse 19 to verse 19, my message today will be based on the entire chapter. But for time's sake, I only read verse 19. And from verse 19, we can get a very good idea about what the word is going to be about. When you forsake the Lord, God says, repent. And before I even get into my message, I want to look at the meaning of repentance. And I like to remind this of remind people of this. Repentance is not just saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Repentance is not just saying a few words. It's got to be sincere. And then repentance is an action word. Hallelujah. Repentance says I'm on this path, but I'm turning around. I will go even further to say uh, that repentance is saying uh, I'm on the path to hell. Uh, I'm on the path to eternal destruction. But I gotta turn to Jesus. I gotta turn to glory. I gotta turn to grace and mercy. I gotta turn to the Creator. The message that Jeremiah was instructed to give the nation of Israel was one of, imp of repentance. To stay the same message is given to the church. God's chosen people. Hallelujah. Israel was God's chosen people. And we know here as the church are God's chosen people. And he is calling the church to repentance. He is calling the church to repentance. Hallelujah. And I went and started at the New Testament but really from the fall of mankind, when Eve took of um, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and so did Adam, God has been calling his chosen back to repentance. 
And before I go into my main message for today, I want to look at a little background of the scripture. It is said that this is possibly Jeremiah's first message after his ordination. And sometimes as ministers, the Lord gives us some hard words to deliver. Right after his ordination, he is told to rebuke the nation of Israel. But the word of the Lord is for reproof, rebuke, and correction. And we see all of this wrapped up in this one scripture. This one chapter, this message that the Lord gave Jeremiah to give to the nation of Israel. And as I sometimes as ministers, the Lord gives us some hard words to deliver. Sometimes we would like to deliver words of glorious hope and prosperity. But then the Lord gives us a word of rebuke for the church. But we have to deliver what the Lord gives us without reservation or fear. With full confidence and faith in what God has spoken to us. Hallelujah. Sometimes as ministers, the Lord gives us some hard words. Hallelujah. Sometimes I would like, hallelujah, to be the bearer of good news and say you're going to get a thousand dollars and you're going to get a hundred dollars time you get home. But then the Lord gives a message of rebuke. And we are to deliver what the Lord gives us, what the Lord imparts into us to deliver unto his people. Without fear, with full faith and confidence in what God has spoken unto us. I don't know who that word was for. Hallelujah. I don't know who that word was for. But we are to deliver what God has given to us without reservation or fear, with full confidence and faith in what God has spoken to us. So it is a call to repentance. A call to repentance. And this call to repentance is mainly done by showing them their sins. And today I will do no different. While reading and studying the word, I have pulled out a couple of points that I want to speak to you on that can be brought out of Jeremiah's message. And I won't even to try to apply them to this day and age. Because we might look at it and say that Old Testament, that happened so many years ago. I never checked to see how many BC, hallelujah, this was. But it was written even before Christ came. So we might be apt to say that this is old. Uh, but the message of repentance has been around since the fall of mankind. And the people also see how many things have still remained the same after many thousands of years. After so many thousands of years, so many things have still remained the same. The first thing we realize about the people were they were ungrateful. They were ungrateful. That is verse 1 to 8. You can look at that in your um, leisure time. But here they were questioning the Lord. Where is the Lord? That is what they were asking. They were ungrateful. Huh. 
The first thing the prophet showed them was their ungratefulness. In the verses, God starts about speaking both about his love and his kindness towards them and their love towards the love that they had towards him. It is said that the love between God and Israel was like that of a newly married couple. God did so many things for them since he formed them as a nation, yet they had forsaken God. God's chosen, God called out a peculiar people that God led across the Red Sea by and through the dust and through and by cloud and fire through the wilderness and they still left God. I want to repeat that. God's chosen, God's called out, a peculiar people that God led, led across the Red Sea by cloud and fire through the wilderness and they still left God. This is exactly the same thing with us. God has been so merciful unto us. God has been so merciful and gracious unto us. He brought us out and through so many different things, yet we have forsaken Him. He takes it even further and challenges them to find one time he had not been good to them. And like us, and like the Israelites, we could not say that God has sinned against us. But everything that has first that has happened that happened to them and that has happened to us is because we sinned. And even then, God did not forsake them. He continued pro to provide for them. When they began to complain in the wilderness and they were wondering, even in the wilderness, God provided, uh, hallelujah, He provided food for them in the wilderness. L last week, we even saw that He provided water out of a rock for them. God did all these things. Ah, God did all these things. Yet they forsook Him. There were a bunch of ungrateful people. And that is us today. We, and I can say we, are a bunch of ungrateful people. God does so much for us. Ah, uh, and it seems like it is so easy to put God on the back burner. He's so merciful, but we still put Him on the back burner. They changed their gods. This is the second point. Verse 9 to 13. They changed their gods. I'm going to put that up and read that scripture. Therefore I bring charges against you again, declares the Lord. I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Cyprus and look, send to Kedar and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its God? Yet there are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. Worthless idols, God says. They have replaced their gods for worthless idols.
be appalled at this, you heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. The first question that we have to ask is, why did they change their God? Why did they forsake the one true God? We find out it is not because of anything that God had done towards them, but rather it was their sin. The, the rest of the world was saved, it was serving their gods and their idols and they wanted to be like them they wanted to do what the rest of the world was doing and sometimes so things of the world may seem very enticing and many times may seem temporarily rewarding but when the going gets tough and the things of life are overwhelming us the things of the world will be of no help to us and I'm going to get into that later on down in my message so here God please with the people a call to repentance before punishment there is always God's pleading we need to understand that when we forsake God we forsake his mercy when we forsake God we forsake his mercies. They were God's chosen, but they chose to forsake Him. They are compared to cisterns, broken cisterns. Cisterns are pits of or pools in the earth or rock which they would carry water to or which should receive the rain. And they proved broken cisterns, falls at the bottom so they could hold no water. When they came to quench their thirst, there they found nothing but mud and myrrh and the filthy sediments of a standing lake. If we make an idol of any creature, wealth or pleasure or honor, if we, ha if we place our happiness in it and promise ourselves the comfort and satisfaction in it, which are to be had only in God, if we make our joy and love our hope and confidence, we shall find it a cistern which we take a great deal of pain to hew out and fill and at best it will hold but a little water and that dead and flat and soon corrupting and becoming nauseous nay it is a broken cistern that cracks and cleaves in hot weather so that the water is lost when we have need of it most. Hallelujah. So when we forsake God and turn to the things of the world, there are but broken cisterns. When things get hot, when we come, when we, when we come across challenges, there is nothing to draw on. It says they ruin themselves by doing so. They ruin themselves by forsaking God. The part I want to focus on is they lost their freedom. The adversary prevailed against them. It shows how, if I'm going to put it up quickly for you, uh, it shows how their, their enemies came and conquered them. That is verse 14 to 19. Their enemies came and 
conquered them. So the adversary prevailed against them. And I want to bring the natural into the spiritual. And say that when we forsake God, the freedom from sin is lost. Then we go back to the creation of time, the fall of mankind. Adam and Eve, they knew no sin. But when they forsake they then they forsook God and went against what God said. They sinned. Sin was introduced to the world. Because they the, the sin entered the world and they lost their freedom from sin and ultimately the world lost its freedom from sin. The wealth of heaven that was once promised is now lost and we will ultimately eternally be abused and tormented if we forsake God if we forsake God and go our own way and we try to fill it with other things we are ultimately heading to eternal abuse and torment all of this because of sin and I want to take a look at sin a bit the nature of sin it is forsaking the, the Lord as our God. It is the soul's alienation from Him and a virgin to Him. Cleaving to sin is leaving God. You might say, I never worshipped an idol. I never served another God. But when you decided to leave and sin and do your own thing, you left God. And it's us who would never say that we forsook God, but when that we still come to church and we still believe in God's saving power, and we ask for forgiveness, when we sin, when we cleave to sin, we leave God. We can't be both places. When we leave, when we cleave to sin, we leave God. The cause of sin, it is because His fear is not in us. Holy awe. There's no more holy awe. It is for what? It is for what want of a good principle in us, partic particular for want of the fear of God. This is at the bottom of our apostasy from Him. Men forsake their duty to God because they stand in no awe of Him, nor have any dread of His displeasure. There's no reverence for God. There's no reverence for the things of God. And when we don't when we don't when we don't when we don't um consider these things and have holy awe and reverence for God, we are starting to slip into sin. When that holy awe and fear of God's wrath and displeasure, old Rabbi Sata, that very fear of God's displeasure when we lose that fear, we tend to lose God. We tend to lose God because then we decide that we can do uh, whatever we want, uh, whenever we want, uh, how we want. Uh, and we decide this. But God takes, but we gotta restore holy awe. The malignity of sin is an evil thing and a bitter thing. Sin is an 
evil thing, only evil, and evil that has no good in it, and evil that is the root and cause of all other evil. It is evil indeed, for it is not only the greatest con. Charity to the doctrine, nature, the divine nature, but the greatest corruption of the human nature. It is bitter. A state of sin is the gall of bitterness. And every sinful way will be bitterness in the latter end. The wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. And death is bitter. The wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. But I don't just want to stop there. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. The fatal consequences of sin. As it is in itself evil and bitter. So, is, so it has a direct tendency to make us miserable. And that brings us to verse 19. Thy own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Not only will, not only destroy and ruin thee hereafter, but correct and reprove thee now. They will certainly bring trouble upon thee, and punishment will so inevitably follow the sinner, that the sin shall itself be said to punish thee. So, the Lord doesn't only tell us that destruction and punishment is down the road, but He gives us a way of escape. He tells us, he corrects and reproves us now that we can make it right. And I'm going to wrap up very shortly because the time is getting late. The use and application of all of this. Know therefore and see it and repent of thy sin. That so the iniquity which is thy correction may not be thy ruin. They left. This is the fourth point. They left covenant, and then I'm going to just go through them the rest very quickly. They left their co their covenant. Here they had idols. Their joy and happiness was in something else. They had broken the commandments that God had given Moses for them. We were told you were not supposed to serve no other god. But they broke the bonds of the covenant. They freely broke the bonds of covenant. The Lord never broke them. They chose to, bro to break the bonds of covenant with God. And they left. And when they left covenant, they left God's mercy. Hallelujah. It meant so much that God said, I gave a recognize them. Hallelujah. They have gone so, so far that God said, I did not recognize them. I don't even recognize them anymore. I can imagine God saying, is this my called out people? Is this my chosen nation? My chosen people? My peculiar people? Is this the royal priesthood? I don't recognize them anymore. And when we forsake God and leave and do our own thing and put our faith and trust in other things, Almighty God, and have no awe of God, have nothing to do with God, God looks down and say, Was this one of my children? I don't recognize them. Was this one of my children? I don't recognize them. Matthew Henry, commentator Matthew Henry wrote, they were irreclaimable. Hallelujah. When the Lord looked down, he saw they looked irreclaimable. But God's power, hallelujah, God's power 
God's power to save can save who we deem irreclaimable. Hallelujah. That body that used to sit down next to you in church, that have left the church, and you see them out there doing all that they are doing. Pray for them, because they are not irreclaimable. They are not irreclaimable. The power of God to save is mighty. Mighty. Hallelujah. And God says, when I'm going back up to covenant, they were lame prostitutes. Ready. Hallelujah. I believe what God was saying, they were, re- they were just there ready to receive something new. They had left God. They left covenant with God. And they were ready to receive something new. Hallelujah. They were ready to receive. Hallelujah. They looked and saw the different things the other countries and nations were doing. And they were ready to receive it. They tried. Hallelujah. They tried to follow. But they got it right. They tried to follow other gods. But they got it wrong. They were trying to be like the other nations, but they got it wrong. No nation has ever changed its gods. That's why it was saying, no other nation. And they, thinking they were like the rest of the world, found out that they were nothing like the rest of the world because the other nations had never left their God. And they were trying and trying with all of these other gods. But their persistence was in the wrong place. They never even served God as fervent as those other people were serving their gods and their idols. And here they are trying to switch up gods. They never got commitment and service to the to one to one God correct. The true and living God correct. And here they are trying to serve other gods. We get serving God right. But be ready to move on to the things of the world that seem enticing. But they are only temporal. After this life there is the eternal. And nothing that is temporal can go there. When they have place, replace God. Ultimately, what they had replaced God with, ultimately would be of no help to them in their time of need. Oh, mighty God. Some people get jobs, and that becomes their idol. They're so committed. uh, I'm not saying you're not supposed to be committed to your job. They put all their faith and confidence in their job and security. And they forget about God. But when they need healing, they can't call upon the job. They might got the money to go and pay the doctor. But if God don't guide the hands of the surgeon. If God don't... Hallelujah. If God don't intervene... Is of no help to them. When we try to replace God. In our midnight hour. Hallelujah. When it seems like all hell. Is breaking loose. Ultimately. Those things will be of. No help. To us. But God says. Repent. And this was not the first time. That God sent the message. Hallelujah. But here again he's pleading with the saints. He's pleading with Israel. Today God is pleading with you and says repent. 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 Oh mighty God. God is saying 
repent. From the time of creation, from the time of the fall of man, God's message to the church has still remained the same. Repent. They already knew, but they refused to repent. And the final point I want to look at is they forsook, then they forsake, they forsake, forsake God. It led them to committing acts that were ungodly and immoral. Hallelujah. They led them to committing acts that were ungodly and immoral. When we start losing that holy awe of God, that reverence for God, sin will creep in. And then the nasty, then the nasty things, uh, immoral, ungodly things will start to creep in our lives. But God has given us a chance to repent. God has given us a chance to repent. Some of us might have lost that holy awe, but are still here holding on. God says, repent. You too need to repent. And ask for God's strength. Oh, mighty God. Oh, Mashata. Oh, Mashata. Mighty God. We're going to go to the throne of God in prayer. Hallelujah. And if I was to come up with a conclusion for my message today, it would be simple. God says, repent. As simple as it is, it's the message that is being preached from the fall of man. Repent. Hallelujah. Most mercy for God. Lord, we thank you for your great love and kindness that you have always freely extended unto us. Most mercy for God as we come before your throne. Father, we pray that you would forgive us of our sins. Lord, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray for a revival of holy awe and reverence for you. That it seemed to be lacking in the church today. In this modern day church. And Lord, not only do we pray for ourselves, but Lord, we go even further and pray for the churches across this island. The churches across this world. that That a revival of holy awe and reverence for you would be had. Strengthen us, God. Strengthen us. Father, if there be that one that would say I would like to give my heart to Christ, Lord, I pray that upon their confession of their sins, Lord, that you would forgive them from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray that you would cleanse them and wash them in your blood. Wash them white as snow. That they too would be counted as your chosen people. And Lord, help them never to divert or forsake you. Lord, that is our prayer for all of us today. That none of us will forsake you. But Lord, that we will live life. Hallelujah. God, help us to be grateful. Help us, Lord, to be grateful. Lord, you are so merciful unto us. And yet sometimes, because of the absence of holy awe, we try to push you on the back burner when it feels, when we feel ready. But Lord, we repent. We repent of our ungratefulness. And Lord, we today declare that, Lord, we are grateful unto you for your mercies that are extended 
unto us. Lord, we admit that it is not because of anything you have done, but our very own sin has ruined us. Lord, help us today. Lord, that is our prayer today. Lord, help us. Lord, there are many people that will be watching this live stream, Lord, all with different problems, all with different issues that they need to get right. And all, Lord, Lord, we can say is, Lord, help us. Lord, help us is our prayer. These things we ask in your most matchless name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us for our service today. We went a bit lengthy, but we thank you for staying with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for staying with us even down to now. So, I just, before we repeat our benediction, I... We will be here, and the notice says we'll be here next week, Sunday, 3 p.m. again, hallelujah, to hear what God will say to us. The Lord has given us a lot to think about, uh, a, lot to ch- a lot to chew on, a lot the Lord has spoken on to us today. And the message today is simply repent. The message that has been given from generation to generation, from the time of the fall of man, and that is repent. So we thank you all for joining us here, and we pray God's blessings upon you. And now, may the, may the God of peace, who raised Christ from the dead, strengthen your inner being for every good work. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Amen and amen. God bless you today in Jesus' name. Working, working it out, working. So many things unstable, but my God is able to handle anything. He can fix all of your problems. No matter what you're going through, no matter things may seem hard, all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord. So when you're almost up for the count, my Jesus working it out. Get ready to give him a shout. My Jesus working it out. He's working, working it out. Working it out. Working it out. My Jesus working it out. Working, working it out. Working it out. Working it out. My Jesus working it out. Working, working it out. Working. Why yo 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 so when you're almost done for the count, my Jesus working it out. Get ready to give him a shout. My Jesus working it out. He's working, working it out. Working, working it out. Working, working it out. My Jesus working it out. Working, working it out. Working, working it out. Working, working it out. My Jesus working it out. Working, working, working it out. Working, working. Why yo 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 y